without any monthly subscription fee. Using your local computer, you can generate images just like this. By the end of this video, you will have successfully installed Stable Diffusion on your local computer. You will have downloaded a model that you can use to generate high resolution images very quickly. And you will have covered the basics of prompting and upscaling your images to a higher resolution. First things first, let's cover the installation. Stability AI is the company responsible for developing Stable Diffusion. And thankfully for us, they've released it under the Creative ML Open Rail M license. That means it's free for us to use, even for commercial purposes. You can see more about their terms of service by clicking the link in the description below. Unfortunately for us though, is that Stability AI hasn't released Stable Diffusion as a finished ready to use product. However, the open source community has come together and released a large number of different projects. Uh, one of the best is one by a programmer called Automatic 1111 and he released Stable Diffusion Web UI. However, almost everybody refers to his product as Automatic 1111. To get access to Automatic 1111, all you have to do is search for Automatic 1111 using your favorite search engine. Click on the first result. When you're on the Stable Diffusion Web UI website, you'll notice a green button called Code. Click on that button and click on the download zip option. Once you've downloaded it, simply extract all. After you've extracted the file, it's advisable to move it to a new location. It's strongly recommended that you move this file to a root directory of a hard drive, such as the C drive. We move the folder to a root hard drive directory in order to prevent future headaches. If you want to rename the folder to anything, it's strongly recommended that you do not use spaces in the file name and opt instead for dashes and underscores. Now that we've got Stable Diffusion Web UI on our local computer, we will need to go and get two further dependencies. One is Python 3.10 and the other is Git. Go back to your favorite search engine, search for Python 3.10 and scroll down the page to the files section. Under the Files section, you'll see an option called Windows Installer 64-bit. Download this and run the executable. Follow the default instruction. To get access to Git, we follow much the same process. We go to our favorite search engine, we search GIT, and we click on the Download for Windows option. On the page you land on, you'll see an option under the heading other Git for Windows Downloads standalone installer. It's recommended that you download the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Run the downloaded installation executable and follow the default instructions. For both Python and Git, you can find the direct download links in the description of the video below. After you've installed Python 3.10 and Git, it's a good idea to restart your computer. Uh, this will allow Windows the opportunity to create some necessary registry entries and help prevent future headaches. Now that we're back and you've hopefully restarted your computer, you'll want to navigate through to your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. And in that folder, you'll scroll all the way down. You'll notice a file called webui.bat. Double click and run this file. You may see a big red pop-up warning you that your PC might be at risk. Don't worry. Automatic 11.11 is a trusted repository and this program is safe to run on your computer. Click on the more info and run anyway button. A command line interface window will open. It appears like a black window on your screen. It will begin downloading a whole bunch of extra files that it needs to run. The downloading process may take a while depending on your internet speed. For me, from start to finish, it took around 10 minutes. Once the command line interface window has done what it needs to do, it will keep running in the background. A new tab will open on your browser. The Stable Diffusion Web UI will now be available to you. Next what you'll want to do is to delve into the world of models. To do that, we'll first make sure that everything's working correctly. Type into the positive prompt field, a happy puppy on a bed with white linens. This will generate a basic little image of dubious quality. You may not be blown away by the image quality that you get out of the basic model. That's because the basic model that Stable Diffusion Web UI comes with is 
Stable Diffusion 1.5. To download more capable high resolution models, we will search for Civit AI using our favorite search engine. On the Civit AI homepage, you want to navigate over to models. On the top right hand side of the screen, you'll see a button called filters. We'll want to use the filters to sift out the very large number of different models available. Click on the filters drop down, select checkpoint and select SDXL Turbo. SDXL Turbo images are much higher resolution than the base SD 1.5 models. And as the name would suggest, Turbo models are quite fast. This also means that SDXL Turbo is going to be viable on the largest possible range of different PC hardware configurations. Although it is worthwhile saying at this point that any graphics card with lower than 6GB of VRAM is going to struggle. But get access. Now that we've sifted out uh, a bunch of the other models, we will see that DreamShaper XL is the top ranked model available in the SDXL Turbo category. It has at the time of recording around 290,000 downloads. It consistently produces high quality results with relative ease. And this is the model I suggest that you start with. You will notice that there's a large number of different options just beneath the title. You will want to select any of the options which includes the word Turbo in its name. For me, in this case, it is V2.1 Turbo DPM++ SDE. To get access. Once you've made sure that this button is selected, you'll want to press the download button. This may take a while again because these models are quite large. This one is 6.46 gigabytes. Once the download is complete, you will find in your downloads folder a file called DreamShaper XL underscore V21 Turbo DPMSDE.SafeTensors. You'll want to cut this file, then Navigate through to your Stable Diffusion Web UI Master folder. You'll want to navigate into the Models subfolder. Then navigate again into a subfolder labeled Stable Diffusion. Paste DreamShaper XL underscore V21 Turbo into this folder. On a side note, you'll notice I have a large number of different models inside my folder already. That's because I've been playing extensively with a large number of different models. Eventually your folder will start to look just as populated as mine. By default, the only other model which should be present in your folder is the V1.5 pruned EMA only start safe tensors. The next step is to navigate back to your stable diffusion web UI in your web browser. You'll want to click on the two white arrows in a blue box button. That's the refresh button. This will refresh the newly added model to the available list. Press the drop down menu and select DreamShaper XL V21 Turbo. Since we're using an SDXL type model, we will need to get a new variable autoencoder. This is called a VAE file. The VAE file we wish to download is called SDXL underscore VAE dot safe tensors. To find this file, simply go to your favorite search engine and search for SDXL underscore VAE. Click on the first result. This will take you to a hugging face page for SDXL VAE. Click on the files tab, then scroll down. You will see an option labeled SDXL underscore VAE dot safe tensors. Download this file. The direct link to this download page will also be available in the description box below. Once SDXL VAE safe tensors has been successfully downloaded, you'll want to cut that file from your downloads folder, navigate back to your stable diffusion web UI master folder, navigate into the model subfolder and paste the SDXL VAE dot safe tensors into your VAE subfolder. Next, we'll need to activate our variable autoencoder. To do that, navigate back to your Stable Diffusion web UI and click the Settings tab. In the Settings tab, on the left, you will notice an option labeled VAE. Click on the option labeled VAE. You will then click the Refresh button on the right of the drop-down labeled SDVAE. 
This will refresh the list of available VAEs to include your newly pasted SDXL underscore VAE dot safe tensors. After selecting SDXL VAE dot safe tensors, go to the top of the tab again and click apply settings. Time to generate your first ever SDXL turbo image. Yeah. To get the full results and quality advantages that Turbo gives us, we will need to make some important tweaks. First, we will reduce the sampling steps from the default value of 20 to 8. And we will reduce the CFG scale from the default value of 8 to 2. To get to After get making those necessary tweaks, we'll enter the same prompt that we did before, a happy puppy on a bed with white linens and click generate. If your puppy comes out looking like rainbow vomit instead of the adorable fluff ball, uh, you'll want to do two of the following steps to troubleshoot. One, you can check that you have correctly applied your VAE settings in the settings tab. And two, you can restart your stable diffusion web UI. If everything's going according to plan, you will now be able to generate stable diffusion XL turbo images. In order to make sure that we're producing things a little bit more visually interesting than a basic puppy on a bed, we're going to be looking at prompting and upscaling in an advanced manner now. To get an idea about how to correctly prompt DreamShaper XL Turbo, we're going to go back to the DreamShaper XL model page on Civit AI. Scroll down to the gallery section to find inspiration from other creators. When opening the page of an image, you will see that there's prompt and technical information, both positive and negative prompt information. And then in the technical information section, you'll see the sampler used, the model name, CFG scale, steps, and a seed value. To get access, right click the image you like and click save as. The image will be saved with all of the prompt and technical information as metadata. To, get ac to access the prompt and technical information metadata, go to the PNG info tab of your Stable Diffusion Web UI. This will be the fourth from the left option just beneath your model selection dropdown. On the PNG info page, you should see a drag image here box. You'll want to drag the image you downloaded into that box. The to parameters field should be populated with all of the images prompt and technical information metadata. Click send to text to image in order to transfer all of that prompt and technical info over to the image generation tab. Back over on the text to image tab, you should notice that the prompt fields are now full of all of the text that is associated with that image. Before we hit generate, we should first make some optimizations to ensure speed and reliability. The first change we will make is to disable the high res fix if it's activated. This function tends to be very slow. Next, you'll want to set the seed value to minus one. This is a randomizer number and allows you to generate new images every time instead of the same image every time. Next, because we've disabled the high res fix, we will need to set our resolution. In this case, we will change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. Once you've made those necessary tweaks, click generate. You should have a beautiful full HD image generated. If you have one of the newer RTX 4000 or 3000 series graphics cards from Nvidia, this shouldn't take longer than 30 seconds. AMD users in my limited experience should expect their graphics cards to take upwards of two to two and a half minutes to generate an image of this quality. My experience is also very limited with Mac, uh, but you should expect anywhere up to eight minutes for a generation. To get Full HD image is fine for many purposes, but others may wish to increase the resolution of their image without impacting the quality of their image. To do this, you'll want to open up your favorite search engine and search for Open Model DB. Click on the first result you see. On the Open Model DB website, you'll want to search on their on site search Ultra Sharp. Download Ultra Sharp by Kim2091. The file is roughly 64 megabytes and it shouldn't take very long to download at all. To get access Once you've got the 4x ultrasharp.pth in your downloads folder, navigate again to your stable diffusion web UI master folder. You'll want to click into the models subfolder and then you'll want to paste the 4x ultrasharp.pth into the ESR GAN folder. 
To upscale your full HD image to 4K, you'll want to click on the triangular icon button beneath your image. This is the send image and generation parameters to extras tab button. In the extras tab, you'll notice a number of different options. There will be a slider for resizing. Set the resize value to two. In the upscaler one drop down menu, select the 4X ultra sharp model from the upscaler drop down. Press generate. And there you have it, a full 4K Ultra HD 3840 by 2160 resolution image without any monthly subscription using your local computer and Automatic 1111's Stable Diffusion Web UI. If you would like a full written version of this tutorial, you can open the description box below the video and click on the Gumroad link. That's all there is to it. You should now be able to access your automatic 1111 at any time on your local computer and generate images to your heart's content. If you found this tutorial helpful and want to stay up to date with the latest artificial intelligence news, subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the meantime, take a look at one of these recommended videos.